Today for our math lesson, we are going to be practicing different ways to represent numbers. Earlier in the year, we also practiced this skill, but our numbers were a bit smaller. So today is going to be a bit of a review lesson, but we're going to take our representation one step farther to deal with some larger numbers. First, let's complete a lesson review. When we first started learning about representing numbers, we used these three symbols. We started over here with our ones. Then we moved to the sticks, which we refer to as tens. And at the end of our last unit of representing, we practiced adding in the hundreds. Now, these symbols represent using base 10 blocks. Most of us don't have base 10 blocks at our homes, so we can represent them by using the circle for the ones, a stick for the tens, since our 10 stick actually looks like a stick, and then we can use a square for our hundreds, because the hundreds represent 10 of those 10 sticks smushed together. For our first review, we are going to take the number 43 and represent it with hundreds, tens, and ones. Now, when I look at this number, I notice that I do not have any hundreds, so I won't be using any of the squares to represent the hundreds blocks. But I do have four tens and three ones. So, using that information, I'm going to neatly draw 43. Starting with the tens, 10, 20, 30, 40. Then I need three ones, 41, 42, 43. Since this number did not have any hundreds in it, we should not see any of those squares that represent the hundreds place. The next number is the number 79. Once again, there are no hundreds in this number but we do have tens and we have ones. Now, if you remember back to our previous lessons, we've had discussions about organizing our representations. When I look in the tens place, I see that I have seven tens. So what I do not want to do is just clump them all together like this, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. What we are trying to do as mathematicians is we are trying to make organized mathematical drawings. So we're going to group these tens in a group of five and then make another group for any extras. You can do this in two ways. Here's the first option, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. As you can see, I put five on the top, then I drop down to put the last two. The second option is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. I leave a gap between the first five and the last two. Either way is absolutely fine. It's just whatever you are comfortable with and whichever way you personally like to organize. Both of them work, but we need to pick one of those ways. I'm going to keep the first way since that's my personal preference. And when I look over at the ones, now that my tens are drawn, I need to make nine ones. I'm going to do this in the same way. I'm going to organize them. 71, 72, 73, 74, 75, 76, 77, 78, 79. I put five on the top, then I drop down to put four at the bottom. This is a great way to organize your mathematical thinking so that it's not all a big jumbled mess. In this problem, they show us the picture of the mathematical drawing, and on the line at the bottom, they would like us to write what number that is. Now, when I look at a number like this, I always like to start with the largest portion of number, which in this case, there is a hundred. There is 100. Then I look at my tens. I have one, two, three, four tens, which is 40. Then I go over to my ones and I see that I have five on the top, six, seven. So my total number for this drawing is 147. 
The next drawing, I do see some organization here in the middle in the tens place. I do the same thing as I did last time. I start with the biggest value, which are the hundreds. I have 100. Looking at my tens, I see I have five plus one, which is six. And then I go over to my ones. One, two, three, four, five ones. So 165 is what this drawing represents. In this scenario, they give us the number and they would like us to make the drawing. Now we want to make sure that we are nice and organized. We want to make sure that our drawing is neat and not all jumbled. Now on my screen, I'm using different colors to represent the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. That is absolutely not necessary. And honestly, most of the time in real work, we're not going to have all these different colors to use, but I'm doing it in this video just to share with you the different pieces of the number. I always like to start drawing with the biggest numerical value, which are the hundreds. I have 100, I have three tens, so 10, 20, 30, and then I have four ones, 31, 32, 33, 34. Now this one was pretty easy because there wasn't any organizing that I needed to do. These were all pretty small numbers and I only need to really organize into those groups if it's larger than the number five. This number I can see right away, I am going to need to organize. Just like last time, I'm going to start with the hundreds. I have 100, I have seven tens. So I'm gonna use that organizing skill that we practiced. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, five on the top, two on the bottom, and then I have two ones, 71, 72. And for the last bit of practice today, we're going to practice what it would look like if we are given lines to represent the hundreds, the tens, and the ones. Now, sometimes what we want to do on these lines is put how much this number is worth. For instance, when I look at this number here, I see that I have 100, and we know that's worth 100. So sometimes we put a 100 here but we're not doing expanded form in this lesson. And if I write 100 on this line, that's telling me that I have 100 hundreds, which I only have one. So instead of writing how much it's worth, I'm just going to count how many hundreds there are, and there are one hundreds. Then I go next door to my tens. I see I have five, six, seven, eight, eight tens. And then over here I have two ones. So my total number is 182. That is something that we'll do when we dive into expanded form. But for now, since we're just writing how many hundreds, how many tens, and how many ones, we just need to write the actual number, not how much they are worth. Here's another example, starting with the hundreds. I see that I have one, two, three hundreds. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five tens. And then, oh, I see some more organization. I have five on the top, six, seven. So my total is 357.